Who would have guessed it? This video is sponsored by my own line of anime to D&D homebrew packs. Our hands are more than just tools. With the proper technique, they can also be weapons of mass destruction. You're also gonna need a dump truck filled with overpowered magical items, but you know, anyone could do it if they believed hard enough. So the last time we built a character around punching, we ended up dealing 414 damage in a single hit. At the time, that was considered, as some would say, a, a lot, lot of damage. damage. But as always, I'm terrified of the comments made on most of these big brain D&D videos, because I'm over here thinking that this stuff is complicated while taking weeks to research it. And then when the video finally releases, there's swarms of people releasing essay length comments like they've already done the math beforehand, and were just waiting for me to upload the video so they could blast me with facts. It's always a bit intimidating, but I do gotta say, the expectations to get things right the first time encourage me to do exactly that. And when I see a lot of passionate commenters offering advice, I can't help but make a new video with all the new ideas. Anyway, Anyway, to jump right in, the rules for the One Punch Challenge are pretty simple. We can only make one punch, and any enchantments or changes to our character's unarmed strike is perfectly fine. All magic items are allowed. There aren't a whole lot of useful ones for this challenge anyway, so it's not like it matters much. This dice is banned because randomness is annoying. Boons aren't allowed because then our character could just skyrocket into infinity. Saving throws and conditions don't work, along with anything that needs advantage to activate. So special abilities and stuff that rely on them will not be be used. Yes, that includes purple worm poison and that one overpowered monk ability, so don't think I forgot. Nobody's allowed to help us because greenlighting that would spiral this challenge into insanity, and every dice always crits and rolls its highest number, just so we can see what the maximum damage for this punch could theoretically be. So to start, let's hop right into the magic items department and pick out some cool stuff to wear. First up, the Hand of Vecna. It's the hand of a super powerful lich, capable of immense magical feats, snapping people's bones out of existence, and and corrupting those who dare attune. Just cut your right hand off and replace it with this one, and unlimited power will soon be yours. It also makes our punch a little cold too, so that's pretty nice. Demon armor. It puts blades on our hands. It's also magical, so you can get a bit of that cool glitter effect as well. Afterwards, we can head on over to our local magical tattoo parlor and get a Blood Fury tattoo. Now whenever we punch someone, the feeling of death washes over them. Douse that bad boy in some sharpening oil to make those blades cut nice and clean, read 10 books of strength, which transforms you into whatever super swole fictional character you can think of. We got some delicious potions, which make us really big. You'd think that being as large as an ancient dragon would make us deal tons more damage, but it's not that impressive. And finally, put on the insignia of claws. It lets you deal one extra damage. Compared to every other item, this one's just sad. Alright, now that we're completely decked out, we can move on to picking our race and a few feats. Once again, Half Orc is the best race for the One Punch challenge. A lot of you said Goblin would work better just because their groin punching ability scales with their level. But don't forget that punching people's nether regions requires you to be smaller than them. And with all those potions we drank earlier, that's not an option anymore. Anyway, with the Savage Attacks ability that orcs get, the special feat Orcish Fury, and the Martial Adept feat giving us a special way to lunge at our opponents, we can grab a few extra dice to roll before the final damage tally. Alright, and last up we can get to where the big damage comes from. Picking our class, or in this case, classes. Last time we had a lot of garbage everywhere, character levels that weren't even being used, and it just wasn't optimized at all. So our biggest investment will be, surprisingly, into Bard. I had no idea that this class was the best for punching people, but you'll learn something new every day. We're gonna need to throw all of our morals out of the window to become a College of Whispers Bard. They get a cool ability to create psychic blades, so while our hands are doing the physical damage, this magic does the mental damage. While we're here, we can also grab the Absorb element spell. To activate it, just fall into some fire or something and then trigger a massive explosion on your target. And those were literally the only reasons why we put 15 levels in here. I hope it's obvious now just how good this class is. Anyway, the last five levels get chopped up into Paladin, Warlock, and Cleric. Paladin gives us a ton of good combo spells like Searing Smite, which lets us burn holes through our enemies, and Divine Smite that helps in cleansing the heretics. We can also grab the Dueling feature, which gives us extra damage if we're only using one weapon. Sad to say, the demon armor we have gives us two weapons, one for both arms. So we're gonna have to cut our left arm off just so the rulebook doesn't think we're dual wielding with our hands. Now off in the warlock aisle, we're purchasing the ability to curse people, to deal some extra flat damage, and the booming blade spell to make our target feel like they're sitting right next to a house-sized stair 
area system. For the last two levels we get to play with, let's just say that a very certain subclass from one of the best designed D&D books ever made gives us the ability to make our punch deal two times more damage. The Grave Domain Cleric. You can call upon your god, in this case the Grim Reaper, to mark your target for death. The next attack we'll hit them with deals double damage. Keep in mind that this is a second level class feature. Please fix this book, Wizards of the Coast. So, assuming that I did the math correctly, by rolling a critical hit with this devastating gauntlet, and rolling all of these dice at their max values, a single attack can deal 1,230 damage. That more than triples the amount we got in our last video. Remember when we thought one-shotting an ancient green dragon was strong? Well now you can knock out that dragon and both of their ancient siblings. In terms of pure health, our punch could murder almost two full Tarasks. Even if we didn't roll maximum damage, almost no creature in D&D could withstand more than one punch. So, <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I think I can safely say that this video broke the record for the highest possible damage dealt using a single unarmed strike in D&D 5e. With the help from you all in the comments section, and putting some limitations on the build of course. Now if we allowed other D&D characters to buff us up even more, let saving throws work, or allowed this thing to exist, let's just say that we'd be here calculating numbers for at least another hour. I also do gotta remind you all that the luck blade still exists, and if you'd like to take the easy way out of this challenge, using it to wish for a punch that can deal near infinite damage is still an option. A bit off topic, but I think it's funny when a lot of people type up in the comments section, heh, only 1000 damage? In Pathfinder, you could easily do more than 50,000, and that's only off the top of my head. And yeah, that's definitely true, but you'll never hear me talking about Pathfinder for that exact reason. The amount of chaos that can come from a character in Pathfinder is insane. If anything, it's not that fun to do Pathfinder challenges because because you can almost always say it's possible. The Indie 5e has a lot more limitations, and because of that it's just way more enjoyable to push the boundaries. It's like the speedrunning community for old Nintendo games. Super Mario 64 is a really basic game, but so many people still love optimizing ways to play it. Anyway, for anyone who's curious, I'll link the document I wrote up for the damage just in case any of you nerds want to check it out. Maybe you'll even find more ways to abuse D&D's mechanics and do even more damage. A while back I also made Saitama's literal glove, so if builds like like these fascinate you, I'd highly recommend checking out my anime to D&D homebrew packs. We got magic items, races, monsters, and more. The newest pack is themed around undead, and if my horrible video schedule serves me right, is available right now. Pledging will give you access to every pack ever made. Feel free to check them out using the link down below. And with that said, I'll see you all in the next video.